welcome back to Kinder Crafty. Today I'm sitting at my dining room table because I wanted to share with you our journey this past year with having a picky eater, a toddler who went from being a baby that was an outstanding eater to a picky two-year-old. And now that he's three, we're coming out of it. So I wanted to share with you today some of the resources and the tools that I use to help navigate this year, this picky eater that I had um, last year. So the good news is that if your little one was a good eater as a baby, they do come out of it. The good news is, it for me, it only lasted about a year, um, and I just kept trying. So let's dive in with the first resource that I went to, and I want to share with you. It's um, this book called Joe Frost's Toddler Rules. If you don't know who Joe Frost is, she had a really popular show on called Super Nanny. She's um, a British nanny. She was a real nanny. And although she isn't, you know, quote unquote, a childhood psychologist or expert, she's been in the trenches. And so I kind of trust what she has to say. So I bought this about a year ago. And she has a whole, I think she has two chapters devoted to food. But the chapter um, called Food SOS, she goes through and she talks about a couple of different scenarios and how to navigate through them. Let me read you this first scenario because it like hit the nail on the head for my little one. Your three-year-old, although mine was two, <laughs> your three-year-old son refuses to eat anything but breaded chicken strips and carrot sticks. But when he was younger, he would eat anything. For the past three months, he won't even try a bite of anything else. And then she goes through and tells you how to take a step back observe what is going on and then she gives you some advice so let's read the portion that she talks about with um rejecting vegetables because this this happened in my house okay so it says um, it takes at least 12 or 15 times consistently eating a certain food in a variety of forms for a child to establish a true dislike it goes on to say, um, to help him develop his palate, um, it generally doesn't fully happen until he's around five. So even though he's kind of coming out of the really picky stage, at three, I know I still have two years ahead of me to really develop that palate. So um, one of the most important things that I learned is to keep giving it to them, even if they don't like it, to keep making them try it in a variety of forms. So try giving them the vegetable raw, try giving it to them sauteed, use spices that they like, maybe they, you really use a lot of garlic or lemon juice, try steaming it, try doing it like just a little al dente so it's um, got a little bit of a bite to it. Um, that's what I did. So that's how I got him to eat, you know, vegetables in their true form. But I also do some sneaky stuff too. So I'm going to share that with you as well. Um, this was an excellent book, you all. If you want me to do um, a book review on this, I would be willing to do that too because there's a great chapter about when you move um, and have a child that doesn't want to sleep in their own room, fear of monsters, that kind of stuff. The sleep section was really helpful for me too when we moved to this new house. So if you're interested in that, um, let me know and I can do a book review. I'll link, I've got a couple other books I'm going to share, so I'll um, put a link to all of the books down in the description bar if you're interested. So, Joe Frost, Toddler Rules. And really, don't let to the title toddler um, keep you from if your child is three, four, or even five, because she does touch on kids up to the age of five. She focused mostly on, you know, 18 months to, you know, four, but... Um, I found it very helpful. A lot of the information I already knew, but um, a refresher is always great. Okay, two more books. Let's get all the books out of the way. Um, so you all may know that I do sneaky veggie recipes. I'm a firm believer of making homemade um, purees for your baby, but not just stopping when they're a baby, but to continue on putting those um, pureed vegetables in the foods that they love so that they learn to develop a taste for it. And there's two books that I'm going to share. This is the first one. It's Deceptively Delicious by Jessica Seinfeld. She, I feel like, was probably the pioneer to this whole, you know, sneaking veggies in through puree 
Um, her recipes are really good. She um, it's really cute because she'll say at the end of the um, the recipe what each one of her kids how they responded in quotes um, to the recipe. So I feel like her recipes are really good. The pictures are really good. I actually got this I think on eBay for like a couple of dollars. But I'll, again, I'll try to find the link and put it below. So I really, really love this one. She's not um, a chef. She's just a mom. She happens to be a celebrity mom. But um, so anyway, this was great. She's got three kids. Then I got this one as a gift from Catherine. I do it on a dime with my YouTube friends. She sent me the Sneaky Chef. Um, her recipes, I don't feel, are as tasty as Jessica Seinfeld. But I actually like her philosophy much better. Um, I liked her combinations of purees, whereas Jessica Simpson, or Jessica Seinfeld was a purist, where she would just use pureed carrots or just use pureed cauliflower. Um, this this gal, she is a doctor, um, and then she had a picky eater. She had one child that was a great eater, and the second one was a picky eater. Um, she would combine purees to make a really, really nice taste. Hers was a little bit more labor intensive. Um, but I really like, especially the combinations for sweet things, for baked goods. She would co combine like, for example, blueberry and spinach. I, I made a recipe, I think, on this channel. I'll try to link it if I can find it. Um, for blueberry spinach pancakes. If not, and maybe on my other channel, I attempted at one point, you all, to make, an, to have a second YouTube channel. And I way underestimated how much time it would take. So I've got a few recipes on my other channel called Sneaky Veggie, if you're interested. Okay, so the books are out of the way. Let's talk about some tools that I use that I found very, very helpful. This is my, like, work horse. It is a mini food processor. You all probably got for your wedding a big food processor. I very rarely use my big one. I used this one almost every night to make pureed stuff. And I snuck in pureed veggies into almost any pasta dish, for sure. Potatoes, rice, was really easy to sneak stuff in. Now, my little guy did not have a color aversion, like he was not, you know, afraid of the color green, which a lot of kids are. They see anything green that resembles a vegetable, and they're like, no, it's automatic, shut down. And my little guy did not have an aversion to taste. So he liked a strong taste like pesto, so it was very easy for me to sneak green veggies into pesto. So that was a good way that I snuck stuff in. His, my little guy's, um, his aversion this past year was mostly to textures. So he liked the taste of sautéed spinach, but to eat just the whole leaf sautéed in its state, he would like gag. Um, but then just within the last two weeks, he, he started really becoming a much more adventurous eater. So that's why I'm happy to share with you this news. My other um, tried and true is a chopper. Yes, you can chop vegetables yourself. I just think this is easier. So for example, if I was gonna make um, fajitas for my husband and I, I would cut the um, peppers and the onions into strips, right? But my little guy wouldn't eat it like that. So this little mini chopper, has um, the blades like this is kind of like in a zigzag pattern and then all you do is you tap, tap the top your vegetables are underneath I didn't even use this this container but you can use it um, you put them in the put them in there and then you just chop 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 and it chops them up really finely so you can still have the same dinner that you're making for the rest of the family but your little one will be more likely to eat it so I would just chop up those fajita veggies, stick it in with the yellow rice and the chicken, and it, he was good to go. So um, I think that's it, you all. Um, I just wanted to share this with you because I was a mom that said, oh my gosh, when my son was about 18 months, I said, oh, he's the best eater. I don't have any problem getting my child to eat anything. And then I had to eat a little crow because, um, he, I ended up having a picky eater for about a year, and I just kept feeding him the same thing. Like Joe Frost said, 12 to 15 times, I just kept making him try it. In my house, um, you have to try it for at least however their age, that's how many bites they have to have. So when he was two, he had to have two bites. At three, he has to have three bites. 
Um, and so I just kept trying it in different forms and in different recipes and we're coming out of it. He used to love salmon as a baby, then he wouldn't eat salmon, now he loves it. He had, I think, two salmon patties the other night for dinner. So this is for all of you all to encourage you if you're going through this with your little one and you're exasperated. I didn't know what to do with myself last year. When it first started, I thought, what, these are his favorite foods. Why all of a sudden, he wouldn't eat marinara sauce, you all. And we love Italian food. So he um, just went through this picky time and he is coming out of it. So um, encouragement for you all. If you have any questions, leave me a comment below. I'm gonna try to have links for all of these items, the chopper and the food processor and all the books. Um, if I don't see you before Thanksgiving, happy Thanksgiving. And um, we'll see you when it's holiday time. All right, you all, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.